Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this video is about Korean ginseng reverts cancer cells back to normal. And there are studies going back to 1979 about this, and I have uh, uh, links below for 14 of them. And uh, so we're going to talk about cancer, we're going to talk about Korean ginseng, <clears throat> and, uh, and then altered cell metabolism, which is basically what I'm saying cancer is. So when you look up uh, ginseng in uh, PubMed, if you want to do your own research, um, you can't really search Korean ginseng because that's, that's the common name. So you can search the botanical name, which is Panex ginseng, or just Panex. Then the active ingredients are called ginsenicide, so you can search that. And then panoxidol. So, and that's true for all the herbs. You want to use the more scientific terms or Latin terms, if you will, to get the uh, results in your search. Okay, so I carry a product called rhodiola and ginseng from MediHerb. They're from Australia. It's a prescription down there. And um, see, it's a little tiny brown tablet. Now, this tablet is mostly rhodiola. It's um, like 150 milligrams of rhodiola and 100 milligrams of ginseng. So if you want the therapeutic dose of ginseng, which is 2,000 milligrams, um, you have to take four of these. Now, I said it's 100 milligrams of ginseng, but it's concentrated down as an extract from 500 milligrams of ginseng. Okay, they start with 500 milligrams, and they pour alcohol over it, to be honest. This is how it works. And the alcohol pulls out all these active chemicals, and then you get this liquid, and they turn that liquid into a pill, and that's what this is. So one pill is equivalent to 500 milligrams of Korean ginseng. So if you want the therapeutic dose, you take four of them, and um, now you're at 2,000 milligrams. So traditionally, worldwide, when you consume herbs, the basic starting therapeutic dose is 2,000 milligrams, approximately. And it can go up to four, obviously, even 8,000 milligrams a day. So um, that's, that's traditional, traditional use worldwide. Okay, now I bought this from Walmart today. This is their version of Korean ginseng. And uh, one capsule says one, is 100 milligrams. And that's all it says. So we don't know if they had 500 milligrams to start with and they distilled it down to, one, to 100. Or if they just had the dried herb and they chopped it up and they have 100 milligrams of equivalent dried herb in here. So if that were true, you'd have to take 20 of these to get the therapeutic dose. And according to the label, we don't really know, so if you're going to do this, you, you, sh you should take 20 a day just to start the therapeutic dose. Now I, I, put, I poured the whole bottle in here. This, there's 60 capsules in here, so it's three days worth. And it's white. Why is it white? I mean, it should be brown if it's, you know, plant. <laughs> it shouldn't be white. And I smell it, and it smells like chemicals. And that's, it's pretty not potent. When I smell the uh, rhodiola and ginseng, it's very floral and herbally. And it's almost, it reminds me of like during holiday season, you take a big wreath with evergreens and all these different scents that come off this wreath and you hang it on the wall. That's what it, that's what it reminds me of. So you should smell your herbs before you take it, just so you know what you're taking, so you have some idea about what's actually in there. Okay, so having said all this, the rhodiola and ginseng is way cheaper than the $5 bottle I bought at Walmart because the uh, Walmart version is so ineffective and so diluted and it's, you're better off spending the money for a good quality pill and you just take a few of them and it'll last longer and you have greater effects. Okay, so let's talk about uh, cancer with this with this sort of idea of taking a cancer cell and reverted reverting it back to normal um, That falls in line with the other ways that we're addressing cancer So you can kill it kill cancer cells with chemotherapy Which is what all of medicine does and then recently we've learned in the research that ketones kill cancer So you can kill cancer cells with ketosis Okay, number two we can starve the cancer cells with ketosis because that means that your body is burning fat and cancer cells can't burn fat so they starve and then you can fast which actually turns you into ketosis and you also have this term called autophagy where the cells are killing themselves okay now if you get and I have a guy now he's getting ke uh, chemotherapy and um, and he also is getting into ketosis 
And uh, the deeper it gets into ketosis, the easier it is to go through the chemotherapy treatments. And that is also backed up by the research. Okay, number three, reverting the cells back to normal with, and I wrote down two words, salutogenesis and detoxification. So um, Otto Warburg, he's the guy that figured out how cancer cells metabolize and respire. He got the Nobel Prize for it in 1931. And he said cancer cells ferment lactic acid in the presence of oxygen with a toxin. So detoxification is very important for improving your health. And the term salutogenesis means improving your health. So when people make a toast and they say salut, and they're holding up a little glass of champagne or something, that means to your health. And then genesis means the start of or beginning. Okay, so this salutogenesis is, you know, creating health is what that means. Okay, so depending on what you want to do, maybe probably all of it. Because why would you want to hold back? Okay, now getting back to Otto Warburg, there's a, a meme and a post I've seen on Facebook, and it circulates around every once in a while, and I've seen it over and over again for years. It's a picture of Otto Warburg, and the quote says, cancer cells cannot live in an alkaline environment. Okay, now, Otto Warburg did not say that. What he said is that cancer cells uh, ferment lactic acid. Now, lactic acid is an acid, and when you're... Um, when you're burning sugar as fuel, you're releasing acid. Okay, and that was discovered in 1907. And I have a video on that, um, history of lactic acidosis. Okay, but Otto Warburg said cancer is lactic acidosis. So where does the acid come from? It's from burning carbohydrates. It's not from meat. Now here, I'm gonna clear this up right now. So why do people say that meat is acidic? I'm gonna tell you right now, in the late 1800s and very, very early 1900s, the researchers didn't know what to do with food. They're just beginning to study vitamins and minerals and nutrition. And what they did is they burned food and then they studied the ash. And if you burn meat, the ash is acidic. If you burn a lemon, the ash is alkaline. And you can still search online for acid alkaline diets. And it's kind of confusing and it doesn't make sense. And the truth is, that theory that the ash of a food has an effect on the body, it's false. It doesn't, um, it doesn't hold true in a clinical setting. So, I mean, I'm a big fan of old information, but it's got to be true too. So you see me, you know, quote, you know, research from the 1800s, but I only quote it because it's true. Okay, so, so this concept of burning food and studying the ash just let's skip that and let's skip this whole alkaline diet idea. The, true, um, the truth is we got to get off burning sugar and um, excessive amounts of sugar and that, re that reduces the um, acidic production. Okay, so talking about Otto Warburg. Okay, and he got, okay so he got his Nobel Prize in uh, 1931 and I, I wrote this down in 2015 for the first time ever the Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded on botanical research. And that was on Artemisia, which is also known as wormwood, which kills things like worms, hence the name wormwood. And you may have heard of absinthe, which is a super potent type of alcohol. And uh, absinthe comes from wormwood. And they used to consume absinthe a long time ago, and it would create hallucinogen, like they would have hallucinations. And it was banned in the United States for decades. Well, somewhere along the way, somebody figured out how to remove the hallucinogen out of absinthe, and now you can buy it, okay? But the point is, it's potent stuff. It'll make you think funny things, it'll kill parasites, and it's now very well studied, and in 2015, we got the Nobel Prize on it. So not only does it kill parasites, but it kills other things. Co-infections of Lyme, for example, and, and it kills Lyme, too, and... Uh, there's a, I'm not going to, I'll do another video on that. There's a lot of information there. Okay, now, um, when I was in Australia a few weeks ago and learning from them, the guy that started MediHerb, he's the, he's the world's top herbalist in my opinion. He said that ginseng reverts cancer. He said that each cancer cell has over 100 genetic mutations. And I raised my hand and I said, but you know the genetic mutations are a side effect of dysfunctional cell metabolism 
and respiration. And that completely turned the conversation around and he said, yes, you're right. He said, Otto Warburg is right. And he, you know, he and I are going back and forth on this. It was a pretty uh, high energy moment right there. And I said, are there any studies that show the, any effects of herbs on the mitochondria, on mitochondrial health? And he said, no. There are no herbal studies on mitochondrial respiration. Okay, this is extremely unfortunate and we need to have some. And I told them when they come out, they're going to show an amazing benefit on mitochondrial respiration. And he agreed with me. So we don't want to wait for the research to show us that herbs are good for mitochondria. And if you, so science and research is a tool that we use. It's not our master. Okay. It's our servant. So, um, People use research sometimes as a bat, and they hit you over the head with it. <laughs> and the research could be completely like off kilter and missing some bigger points. And then you got to go into uh, the study and, and, and investigate and find out what the heck it's really saying. And, and uh, so anyways, um, these are my thoughts. I've been compiling this uh, for a number of weeks now, and I just laid it all out for you. And I hope you like this information. I hope you get to follow with me. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, share and subscribe. All right, thanks.